اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في الملأ الأعلى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم علمنا ما جهنا وذكرنا ما نسينا من القرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله ربيع قلوبنا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with the upcoming month of Ramadan. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us barakah in our health, in our wealth, in our um, families, in our strength. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows from us those who will lead people to a path of righteousness and a path of truth. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit from the upcoming month of Ramadan in ways that we may not assume it having not yet entered it. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the words of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam words that are true for our practice and our condition. Atakum shahru Ramadan shahrun mubarak That the month of Ramadan is arriving upon you. It is a month that is full of barakah. And I wish insha'Allah today for the next 15-20 minutes in um, uh, this honored presence with you, this virtual Jumu'ah, this virtual bayan of Jumu'ah, uh, to speak a little bit about finding love in Ramadan. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to find his love and to make us from those who love him in the way that he is deserving of. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit from the love of those who love him and to allow us to love the deeds that make us uh, endear to him. Uh, uh, that dua that I just made is not my dua and it's not even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mimma da'a bihi uh, uh, From the dua that was made by the Prophet of Allah Dawood alayhi salam is that he would invoke Allah often saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba al-amal alladhi yuqarribuni ila hubbik Allahumma aj'al hubbak ahab ilayya min, al, uh, min ahli wa mali wa nafsi wa al-ma'i al-barid Allahumma ameen The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reports the dua of his brother Dawood alayhi wa sallam saying that Dawood would invoke God and say Oh Allah I ask you for your love the love of those who love you and the love of the deeds that most people don't love, but the love of the deeds that make me endeared and loved by you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, Allahumma aj'al hubbak ahabbu ilayya. O oh Allah, make your love more beloved to me than my family, my own self, and even a sip of cold water on a, on a severely hot day. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala genuine and true as such. Why do we speak about love before the arrival of the month of Ramadan? Subhanallah, for 11 months, we fill the month, uh, we fill the year with inequity. Whether you and I want to admit it or not, there are things we owe people. And sadly, of course, there will be things that people owe us. And it's important for us to balance what we owe to others as being of a greater priority in our life to be settled than what people owe us. It is from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to be... Uh, a person who bears the burden of others and not inconvenience others with bearing our burden. It is better to be mazloom than zalim. It is better to be oppressed than the oppressor. It is better to be wronged than the one doing the wrong. And even if one has the right in retaliation, it is better to forgive than to receive what we perceive to be uh, what we perceive to be justice in this in this dunya. And therefore you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always advises mankind, وَعَفُوا وَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Rather you should forgive and pardon, expiate. It's as if it hasn't happened. Don't you wish that Allah will forgive you in the same way? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to understand love in its complete sense as it relates to the month of Ramadan. Why do we need to find love in Ramadan? And whose love? Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. 
each of us in our homes, each of us in our families, our extended families, those who are here with us or in a diaspora, those who are distant from us, those who are overseas, there are at times moments of conflict. And those moments of conflict need to be settled and solved before the beginning of the month of Ramadan. If you go back one week, all those WhatsApp messages, all those uh, greetings for the month of Sha'ban, what were they all about? They were about, you know, encouraging you to do something good. The only recorded deed that is in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that invites us to doing something good in that particular night of the middle of Sha'ban, the only authentic hadith that relates to it, that recommends a particular act, is that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah looks down upon His creation and whoever in his heart there is rancor, anger, uh, hostility, agitation towards others are overlooked in his mercy and whoever has in their heart forgiveness compassion love for others they are forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if there are two people mutashah two people who have conflict with each other in that middle night of Sha'ban which precedes the month of Ramadan two weeks up from Ramadan they are not given the mercy of Allah that forgives for them their deeds why because they couldn't find love and I say to you, my dear brother, it is, Im it is an imperative duty for you and I to seek to find love in the month of Ramadan before its arrival, in it and as we exit it, so that we can be from those who have been given the tawfiq and the barakah that we seek in the month of Ramadan. What does the word barakah mean? Uh, Ramadan, shahrum mubarak. It's the month of barakah. What does that mean? What do you mean when you say to me, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa... Barakatu. What do you mean by barakatu? Barakatu is that you're asking Allah for something specific. There are three types of barakah that we're asking for. We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that which is scarce, that which we think is not enough, that which is limited, that which is confined, that which is sequestered, that which is held in a small amount. We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it large. Oh Allah, I have a certain risk. Oh Allah, expand it. Allahumma barik lana fi arzaqina. Allahumma barik lana fi a'marina. Oh Allah, put barakah in my life. Put barakah in the years that I have, in the time that I spend, in the opportunities that I will uh, be able, in my health. Oh Allah, give me the health that I have. Don't let it go away. So the first understanding of barakah, which is tied to salam, which is tied to love, which is tied to brotherhood, which is tied to families. The first is that what is small, you want Allah to make it large. Number two, that which is large, you don't want Allah to deplete it. SubhanAllah, I have really good health. Look at how we speak. I have good health, alhamdulillah. It's not I have health, it's I have good health. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Allahumma barik lana fi abdanina, fi asma'ina wa absarina wa abdanina wa quwwatina. Oh Allah put barakah, the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, in our hearing, in our sight, in the strength in our body, in our, in our badan, in our physical presence. Oh Allah, I, I seek barakah in that from you. What does that mean? It means, oh Allah, don't deplete it. Don't take it away from me. Alhamdulillah, Allahumma barik lana fi darina. Oh Allah, this house, may Allah put barakah in it. May Allah put barakah in my house, in your house, in our homes, in our families. Meaning, oh Allah, don't take it away. Don't let something happen that it, it dissolves. The third understanding of what we ask when we ask for barakah is something non-existent in our life. MashaAllah, there's a brother, there's a sister, they want to get married. Allahumma barak lana ya Rabbi. Oh Allah, put barakah in my life. Oh Allah, put barakah for my daughter. Get, send her a good man. Send him a good, uh, a good girl that will look after him. They will live together on the sunnah of the Prophet Barakah. That's why you make that dua when you meet somebody who just got married. What do you say? Barakallahu lak wa baraka alayk wa jama'a baynakuma fil khayr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you barakah, put barakah between you, and always join you in barakah. Why barakah, 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 barakah? Why? Because that's the essence. That's what you and I are seeking. And subhanAllah, in the times that we're living in today, with the difficulties that uh, 2020 has brought, and uh, subhanAllah, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is latifun bi ibadi. He is the most gentle and subtle with His creation. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us as we walk and as we sit and as we lay in our days and in our nights and as we return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma ameen. So you and I want barakah. How do you find it? 
How do you find barakah? What, what do you and I need to do that our dua seeking barakah is answered? Well, it is to be a source of love. Subhanallah. Al-hubb wal-mahabba. Love and loving. Being a person who seeks to take on the most divine name and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-wadud. The one who engenders love, builds it. Right? What is the great title of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It is Habibullah, the beloved, the loving and the beloved of Allah, the one who loved Allah the most and the one who Allah loves of his creation the most, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And therefore the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he reports from Dawood is important. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Oh Allah, I want, I seek your love. How do you earn Allah's love? It is by doing the things that are requested of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. To become a wali of Allah, it's not one of those crazy concepts, awliyaullah, you know, fly around and things like that. La. Waliullah is someone who is a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala inna awliya Allah. La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. They have iman and taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah maj'alna awliya'aka ya rabbal alameen. Where Allah make us from his awliya. What does it mean to find this love? Well, it means you have to do what's difficult. And you have to persevere in loving those who are at times unlovable. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu he quotes Allah. So this hadith Qudsi. The Prophet Sallallahu said, قَالَ Allah, Allah has said, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي My love is wajib. It is a must, compulsory. It will not be away from these. From who? Who is the one who receives this love from Allah? Wajiba. It's wajib upon Allah. SubhanAllah. An obligation that they will be given the love of Allah. Who is so honored, so fortunate? They are those tahabba min ajli fi jalali. They are those who love each other only and simply because of me being present in their life in their relationship. Um, I remember when I was studying this hadith, uh, my sheikh, he, we were studying a Bukhari and there's a number of hadith about the love of Allah in it. And he said, how is that? How do you earn Allah's love? I said, subhanAllah, sheikh, yani, he said, there's the hard way and the easy way. What do you want? I said, the easy way, mashallah. Uh, you know uh, how we are. May Allah forgive us, Ya Rab. The easy way, of course. He said, uh, well, look, there's two ways. You choose, you tell me which is the easier. The first way is you look through the Quran and the Sunnah. And every time Allah says, Inna Allah yuhib, then you do the things Allah loves. And everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna Allah la yuhib, Allah does not love, or Allah is angered by, or Allah has hatred for, leave those things. It's a long list, 20 plus. Or you can love others for the sake of Allah. I said, oh, well, I love others for the sake of Allah, that's easy. I love my father, my mother, my grandfather, my teachers like yourself, Sheikh. And he said, so which is the easiest? I said, to love. He goes, no, you're wrong. That's the more difficult one. Because to love others is conditional in your mind, but that's not how it should be with Allah. What it means to love is to love those who will not love you back, to love those who have mistreated you, to have a level of love and compassion to those who it's difficult. There's nothing in the world that would make you and I brothers, friends. But because of your Iman and your Islam and your Amal and your family and your right upon me, I will show you love, I will show you compassion, I'll show you forgiveness even when you wronged me. These are the words of the Prophet Look at the words of the Prophet He says, connect the one who cut you off. Connect the one who cut you off. Wa'afu amman ظلمك Forgive and pardon with forgiveness the one who wronged you. La hawla wa la illa billah. Forgive the one who wronged me? Yes. 
all of us, we have somebody in our blood, blood relatives, a, a brother, an uncle, a, a, you know, a cousin who wronged us, who misspoke, who gossiped, who maybe Hain or Hasad or whatever it may be. And in our heart, sometimes you say, oh, I wish I never, I wish they didn't come this Ramadan to our house. I, but they have to, they're family. What are you going to do? SubhanAllah. That is not the attitude of someone who's going to stand later before Allah and say, Allahumma li ya Rabb. Oh Allah, forgive me. Finding love with those who will not love you in the same way that you love them, you love them for Allah, not for them. This doesn't mean that you allow people to abuse us. It doesn't mean that we allow people to wrong us. What it means is that we take control over who we love and don't love based on what Allah loves for us and who Allah hates for us to love and have uh, affection towards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, subhanAllah, regularly I will get a question. It'll be a sister or a brother. They will say, my, uh, my brother, I, my, my father wasn't a good man. My mother, she wasn't a good person to me. Do I have to be good to them? Do I still have to call them? Do I have to look after them? Do I have to let them know how my family is and my children? I don't want anything to do with them anymore, my brother. I say to them, it's not your choice. I'm not saying that you have to be the way everybody is with their parents, but it might be for you a great challenge to give a phone call in Ramadan, give it. That's your jihad. That's your struggle for truth, for arriving at a point of love with Allah. It might be that this year all you can do is make a, uh, an SMS, next year a phone call, the year after that you visit them but don't bring your family. Maybe the year after that, subhanAllah, you can let them be with your children. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَجْعَلُ مِن بَعْدِ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا After difficulty there can be ease. Allah will not ask you about what they deserve of you. Allah will ask you about what He has commanded of you. And therefore أُمُّكْ ثُمَّ أُمُّكْ ثُمَّ أُمُّكْ It might not be that you will treat your mother the way I treat my mother. But you must treat your mother better tomorrow than you are today. And this is the concept of birru al-walidayn, uh, an achievement of ihsan, an unending pursuit of excellence with each other. So we show compassion to others and Allah will provide us compassion. We show it to our families before our neighbors and our neighbors before our second neighbors and our community abroad. We remain in the service of others and Allah will be in our service. The Prophet ﷺ says, for example, you know, in the blessed month of Ramadan, the one who feeds people should be the last to eat. SubhanAllah. Why? Because it's an honor to be the servant of the one who will break their fast. It's an honor to cook for the one who hasn't cooked for themselves. It's, a, it's an incredible act of generosity and ibadah to lower our humility towards others. All of this increases our love for each other. To reconnect with the ones that we've cut off is a priority before the entrance of the month of Ramadan or before Ramadan departs. But equally to make extra connections with the righteous. Uh, wallahi, one of the things, uh, may Allah open our schools again and allow them to thrive. I have a feeling that I'm going to miss a lot of the students bringing me dates because they always hear in the first khutbah, you know, uh, that I love dates and it's a good thing to break your charity. SubhanAllah, some Ramadans, I'll have 15 different types of dates from 15, 20 different students a day, just so each of them, I have one of their dates, 15 dates, a lot, it's a whole meal. All throughout the night, I'm eating different people's dates so that they can have an ajr, even if it's a part of the date that I eat so that I eat from and break my fast on all of them. Because this is the sunnah of our Nabi Wasallam that we honor the ulama in our community, the beloved in our community, the elders in our community. Wallahi, I can't. I, I don't remember buying dates in, 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 in my home for the last few Ramadans. Allahumma barik ya Rabb. Allahumma la tahrimna ya Rabb. Oh Allah, don't deprive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love for each other. Why increase our love for each other leads to the love of Allah. Listen to the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says to us in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. Do you want to enter Jannah? They said, yes, ya Rasulullah. He said, well, tahabu, love each other. And it's almost as if he could see in them that they weren't sure how. So he said, 
وَأَفْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Spread peace and salam all amongst you. Meaning don't exclude anyone. بَيْنَكُمْ أَفْشُوا Make it, you know, something so widespread that even the one you don't like, you like him. Even the one you don't normally greet, you greet him. Even the one who your heart doesn't incline to is given that salam by you. أَفْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ This is تَدْخُلُوا دَارَ salam. This is how we enter into the abode of peace. That's why it's referred to as an abode of peace. So how do we increase our love? To focus on those who we believe our relationship needs to be improved on. And it's not to improve from zero to a hundred, but it, you must improve from zero to one, from where you were. And if in your heart today you find it difficult, I pray that Allah opens it and that he puts his nur and his love in your heart that you can love and share that love with others. I leave you with a final word of advice where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Best friends on the day of judgment will be the most severe of enemies, except those whose friendship was built on taqwa. And therefore I say to you, there may be uh, times where we overlook that wonderful brother, that wonderful sister, because they're not from our ancestry or our heritage, they don't speak our uh, home language or something of this nature that maybe uh, maybe our social classes aren't the same, our education level, but that person has a beautiful heart and they are a abd of rahman and you haven't shown them the same love that you've shown to others who are from your ancestral lands but don't deserve it because they lack taqwa and you know they lack taqwa. So I say to you, Build your love with the righteous and Allah will help you to overcome the difficulties that may abound. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow, allows us to find love in the month of Ramadan, that he assists us to be from those who are protected in this blessed month of Ramadan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for you and I to attain righteousness and taqwa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins makes us from those who are ready to be blessed with uh, an admission into Jannah of Firdaus on an account of our love for each other and the love for our fellow man. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us in ranks and makes us from those who are blessed to be from the saviors of the sunnah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam at times of its estrangement. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those who reach the month of Ramadan with health and vigor and safety. And that Allah protects us and elevates us and assists us. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala habibina wa nabiyina wa sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi abdul salawatam wa taslim. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.